This 10th year of Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you. That includes Reed Fishler. You know who you are. Larry Bailey. You too. Michelle Sergio. You're the best. And new patrons. Welcome, Osama and T.S. Bob. On this episode of DTNS, Getty Images plays it safe with AI. iFixit tears down the new iPhone. We'll tell you what they found inside. And you can now talk to chat GPT with your voice, and it'll talk right back to you. This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, September 25th, 2023 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And somewhere around your nation's capital, right to your backyard, your boy, Chris Ashley. And I'm the show's producer, Roger J. Chris, you said your nation's capital, but what if someone's in like Belgium? Well, you know what? Chris, let's <laughs> pretend. You're right. <laughs> your favorite nation no no i'm not gonna no, say i can't even say that either yeah i have to fix it i forget uh no it's good to have you chris ashley uh welcome back again it's thank awesome. you thank you thank you it is uh it's free preview week by the yeah, way yeah this is uh, awesome this is a perfect week so everybody can see what yeah. kind of foolishness goes on in here yeah. now i was telling you earlier i wish people could see more people should see the foolishness that goes on in the background mm. so yeah, you know, so you got you guys got to see this awesomeness that is this show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Uh, let's get right on to the quick hits. If you're wondering, hey, who's providing the AI for those Amazon upgrades to the smart assistant that we mentioned last week? Well, sounds like it's at least in part Anthropic, makers of the Claude chatbot. Amazon is going to take a $1.25 billion minority stake in Anthropic with an option to increase that to $4 billion if they want. Google also has an investment in Anthropic, so it's not like Amazon's slowly going to take it over, uh, at least not without Google cooperating. Anthropic will use AWS as its cloud provider, including AWS Trainium and Inferentia chips for running its models, and AWS customers will get access to Anthropic's models. And while those guys are in investing outside, Huawei has decided to invest mm -hmm. inside and created its own 5G chip in response to restrictions on 5G equipment and technology by the U.S. But a launch event Monday, the company did not mention the 5G chip on the Mate 60 Pro phone in which it ships. Huawei did announce a sedan, a high-end SUV, electric cars, new wireless earbuds, a smartwatch, a tablet, and more. Yeah, it was a big old announcement for them, but no mention of that 5G. I didn't want yeah. to talk about it. Yeah. I'm, imagine Meta's, the world. Well, sorry. I was no, just, no, no, go ahead. They just blew my mind that they, those are some really cool things to announce, and they're, everybody's upset that they didn't announce a chip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Electric cars, whatever. <laughs> uh, Meta's Connect conference is coming this Wednesday, and the Wall Street Journal says it has seen some internal chats indicating that one of the announcements will be Gen AI personas like generation AI, like Gen Z, but AI. Anyway, their chatbots geared toward engaging the youths. One of them is apparently a sassy robot inspired by Bender from the TV show Futurama. Uh, does this sound cringy? I don't know. We'll find out Wednesday, I guess. Well, hopefully Pegatron has the same resilience as Meta because they've announced that they've uh, canceled all three shifts at his plants in Tamil Nadu due to a fire. Pegatron makes iPhones for Apple and told Reuters it did not expect any significant financial or operational impact. That's good. It's good that it said that. But yeah, if there's a little delay in shipping, I don't know. What yeah, I wonder how on. they pull that off. Maybe it's insurance. Yep. <laughs> yeah, or maybe it wasn't as bad as it looked and they're just being overcautious. Who knows? Sure. Uh, speaking of India, Bloomberg sources say India will loosen planned restrictions on imports of laptops, tablets, and other hardware to give companies time to prepare for those restrictions. Remember, they were going to require you to make most of your laptops in India and then have to get a license if you're going to import them. They're, they're loosening that up. Companies now just need to register with an import management system starting November 1st, but they won't have to limit the imports yet. As companies begin manufacturing more devices inside India, then India says the limits will slowly kick in. Again, according to these sources. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we, we talked a while back on DTNS about Getty Images saying it would not use AI in any of its products until it understood the legal risks. Uh, apparently, they have finished figuring out the legal risks, and Getty Images 
worked out the details for Generative AI by Getty Images. They're partnering with NVIDIA on this. It is trained exclusively on Getty's library of licensed photos. That's meant to prevent questions of copyright that exist on models trained on data taken from the open internet. Getty's like, we have the rights to all this stuff, so there's no question that we had the rights. We're not training it on anything else. But that also means the Getty model was trained on a more limited data set. Now, understand that photos created with the tool will not be included in stock content libraries from Getty Images or iStock. And Getty will pay creators if it uses their images to train its model, sharing revenue generated from the tool. The tool also actively prevents you from naming actual people in its prompts. <laughs> Later this year, Getty will add the ability for customers to add their own data to the model to generate images in their brand style. This is uh, this is similar to what Adobe's been doing with Firefly, where they they trained it on their own licensed images from Creative Suite and Creative Cloud. Um, Microsoft uh, recently announced it's going to foot any copyright legal bills for its clients, even though they're using OpenAI's products, which were trained on the open internet. Everybody's taking a different approach to this, but Getty's taken one of the more conservative ones. And I wonder what you think of the trade-off here, Chris, because on the one hand, it sounds like they're leaning towards being ethical, saying, you know, we're not, we're not an, uh, ethical, but also avoiding lawsuits. We're not going to risk, you know, violating someone's copyright uh, and and have to test fair use in this totally new arena of legal questions. But it also means that you won't be able to do as much with this tool because it's limited to that data set. I think this is one of the best examples in tech, at least, of threading the needle I've seen in a while. <laughs> because I, I think this is like a really good position to put themselves in. They really kind of shored up themselves from being sued they also announced before anybody had questions about it that they will take care of anybody whose images are, are leveraged in this in endeavor. And they provide a service that a lot of people could benefit from. I, I mean, I, I don't see any wrong in this. And even if the limited uh, uh, nature or, or data points, the reality is this is still pretty limited in general. You know what I mean? As, as far as how good the images work. Uh, or look and so far it seems like these images are have improved over the previous time so I, I think this is actually a really good uh start yeah I, I hadn't thought about it in that way because it's limited it actually might be better at what it does uh i know the the verge uh, t took it for a test run and said it did seem really good at creating stock photo like images. Mm -hmm. uh, they did one with a ballerina in there and they said, yeah, it didn't have six arms <laughs> and six legs. <laughs> it, it looked like a stock image ballerina. They said the illustrations weren't as good. Mm -hmm. uh, the photo, the photorealistic stuff was good. The, the, the illustration stuff didn't, didn't work as well for them, but maybe that's why Getty wants to let you add your own data to the model. So you could you could say, Hey, we own this logo, please train on that. And then we can manipulate that and work right. it into illustrations and stuff. Uh, but yeah, maybe this will be better for its purpose. Yeah. And the thing is, I have to admit, um, I never really appreciated this, this service to begin with. <clears throat> I never thought it was a big deal. It's like, who cares? But I tell you what's made me um, kind of come around on this is just playing Starfield. You know, this game is massive, massive, massive game. And um, what I'm noticing is quite a few characters, <laughs> uh, 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 NPCs look alike. And I'm like, how mm -hmm. awesome would they have benefited uh, from being able to use this just to give us some more variation? Now, I, I'm not blaming them. It's a massive game. You have a lot of characters. But I could just see the potential in something like this. Man, we've always talked about movies and stuff like this. But, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I would have really loved to see some a, a, le a little bit more variation in a lot of the character images in this game. Yeah, and I, and I think you're right that Getty is smart here to say, look, what people use this for is stock images. Uh, and even if our data set is limited to stock images, well, that's what our tool is for. We don't need our AI to be able to make other things to come up with other uses. We're not trying to be open AI. We're not trying to be an innovative edge case. Uh, we're just trying to make our stock image thing better. And so if we can train it on stock images so it makes great stock images, well, it may be better at that than ChatGPT or not ChatGPT, Dolly, uh, because it's it's more specifically trained and it exposes them to less legal risk. And 
you know, we'll, we'll see what the checks look like, but they're right. paying the artists whose images were used to train this. So theoretically everybody wins here. Yeah. And uh, we should not understate the fact that they said they're not going to use generated images to train on because somebody has the same paranoia <laughs> I, I have of the computer taking over. Yeah. Uh, we still don't know how much this is going to cost. Uh, yeah, you will right. get a, a perpetual worldwide unlimited right to the image, just like you, you would if you do a royalty free image. Uh, so that's nice. You you get the maximal rights out of this and they're going to have an API so you can integrate it into workflow. So yeah, uh, yeah once, right. once we know how much it is and it won't be cheap because it's Getty, but hopefully it's reasonable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it'll be good. All right, folks, with every new Apple iPhone comes a new iFixit teardown, uh, where we find out a little bit about what's inside that iPhone, get an assessment of repairability. Here are some of the findings. The 15 Pro has the Qualcomm Snapdragon X70 5G modem in it. Uh, we, we had heard that Apple was not using its own modem tech yet, and this confirms that. Uh, the Snapdragon X70 uses a little AI to improve speed and latency. And, and apparently this, this modem delivers. A lot of people have already done speed tests and found that it is faster on the same 5G network as a 14 because of the modem. Uh, also a tiny bit bigger battery, 4,422 milliamp hour battery confirmed by iFixit. And it keeps something called the mid frame from the iPhone 14. The mid frame is a frame inside the phone that allows you to open the phone from either side, front or back, and access the components. Basically, the components are mounted to the mid-frame. Uh, you could also think of it as a central chassis. I fix it refer refers to it that way as well. The only downside here is the 15 Pro has it, but the components are all on the display side. So if you remove the screen, to replace the battery, which you would have to do with the 15 Pro, don't have to do that with the regular 15, just the 15 Pro, you're, you it's a trickier operation. If, if you screw up a little when you're removing the glass, you're less likely to make any kind of permanent damage than if you mess with the screen. Uh, but I fix it still gives them credit. Like the fact that you can come at it from either side is still an improvement. The big ding on this is parts pairing. Parts pairing is something that's not new. They did this with the 14 as well, but it means you need to buy your parts from Apple or they will not have all the functionality that a part should have. You not only have to buy the part from Apple, you also have to verify your repair through Apple technical support. And because of that, some repairs just don't work. Some do. Uh, but some don't unless you're getting that part from Apple. Uh, iFixit took the LiDAR sensor out of an iPhone 15 Pro. So this wasn't like some weird third-party cheap part. They took it out of an iPhone 15 Pro, put it in another iPhone 15 Pro, and the camera app kept crashing because that LiDAR sensor was not properly paired. It was all a software problem, not a hardware problem. So the upshot is, the iPhone is easier to repair than it used to be, but software makes that ease contingent on involving Apple in your repairs for parts and verification. So iFixit says we would give it a seven out of 10, which is a really high repairability score. It's much more modular. Even the microphone is now modular, but because you have to go through Apple for so many things to make stuff work, they're giving it a four out of 10, Chris. Yeah. The one thing I want to do is make sure people pay attention to why these type of breakdowns are important because you really want to understand, A, can you get your phone fixed or are you stuck, you know, turning it in and getting another phone? B, are you getting what you pay for? You know, so I, I think sometimes uh, people may hear these type of I fix it articles, but never really actually appreciate why it's important for that, what these guys do. So I just wanted to take a second and, and put that out of there. Yeah. If if you have Apple Care and you're never going to take your phone to be fixed anywhere but an Apple store, none of this matters to you. This matters to the people who either want to fix it themselves, and there's a lot of you out there who want to do that, or you want to be have the option to go to a third party because it's e it's more convenient. Maybe you don't have an Apple store close to you uh, or it's cheaper uh, because you just need a display swapped out or something. Yep. Out of warranty. All of those things come into play there. So, yeah. Um, so now let's talk about the substance of this. I, I you know, I, I don't want I don't think people should right out of the gate uh, beat Apple up for some of the design decisions here, because unfortunately, I fix it doesn't know. And I wish they would kind of be up more, just kind of make that a little bit more obvious is like, you know, 
why they may have went this way, why they didn't, mm-hmm. you know, did they ask why they guys went this way versus not, not that way? Um, it, you know, it, on the on the face of it, yeah, it definitely sounds like maybe an added step to put in there to kind of corner the repair market. Um, that would be an obvious, and you'd be naive not to think at least have that in your mind. But who knows? Maybe there's a, uh, you know, Apple has a reputation to protect. You know, and so if there are people out there fixing these phones or and then, you know, putting it in janky parts and then selling them, people aren't going to say, hey, janky part dealer, uh, you broke my phone. They're going to go blame Apple for that. So yeah, it's kind yeah. of a catch 22 when it comes to some of this stuff, especially when you have a brand as big as theirs to protect at this point. So um, I just. I, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no. I was just going to say I, I, I fix it does uh, refer to the fact that they think what Apple's doing with the parts pairing is saying, well, you won't possibly uh, make your repair to the precision we require uh, if you don't use our parts and go through our validation system. And I fix it's like, you know what? Not every repair needs to be as precise as the factory, right? Yeah. Like it's very Apple to be like, yeah, but it won't be perfect. We need to keep it, make it perfect. Uh, and maybe, you know, it doesn't always have to be, it just needs to work. Right. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of us have that same uh, threshold. <laughs> it's like uh, building a, a, a cutting board and building a house. It's like, yeah, big difference. They're two different things. Yeah. <laughs> two different tolerances. <laughs> That's uh, yeah, spoken from experience right there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I feel like, uh, I feel like I fix it does a pretty good job of, of, of giving Apple the benefit of the doubt here and, and giving them kudos good. and saying like, Hey, look, uh, that mid frame on the 15 pro may put yeah. a lot of the components on the display side, but it could be because that camera is so thick and we get right. that there are design trade-offs and stuff. Like that. Yeah. I, yeah. I just want them to, yeah, I, I like their reviews. I, I, I tend to peek at them a lot and, uh, you know, but I, I guess I just get paranoid in today's world where everything gets hyperbolic and once it's yeah. written and redone, then all of a sudden it's like, you know, it gets blown out of proportion uh, sometimes. And you know, many people may pick this up secondhand as opposed to looking at the original write up from them in the first place. Yeah, for sure. Because I fix it's very uh, calm in its assessment, but somebody exactly. reporting on it. Exactly. Know. They'll pick the piece for the headline. So, yeah. Well, folks, uh, if you got something to tell us about, if you're like, hey, uh, here's something that could help you understand a little more about this topic or that topic because you happen to work in that area, you got experience in that area, we love to hear from you. Uh, you can get in touch with us on so many platforms. Uh, we are at DTNS Show on X. Also on Mastodon, we're at the mstdn.social platform, at Daily Tech News Show on TikTok, and DTNS Picks on Instagram and Threads. Look us up. Wherever find social media is exchanged. OpenAI launched a new version of ChatGPT that you can prompt by speaking and it'll talk back to you in, in a good way. OpenAI is rolling out a new text to speech model in its iOS and Android apps that created human like audio from just text and a few seconds of sample speech. And it's actually very natural sounding. Uh, they give you five different voices. Another new feature lets everyone upload a picture and ask ChatGPT questions related to it. For instance, take a shot of a broken faucet and ask, how do I fix this? Or some food ingredients and ask, what can I make? You can use a a drawing tool to help make your query clear, like circling a part of the image, uh, for example. The new features are coming to paying ChatGPT users first. Uh, you, you should see it over the next two weeks if you pay for the service. Everybody else, uh, all you freeloaders like me, uh, will get it soon after, according to the company. Uh, OpenAI is using the Whisper model for this. It provides text-to-speech and partnerships, too. In fact, Spotify is planning to make some use of this to translate podcasts into other languages. So they'll be using a model to do the translation of a podcast and then using this text to speech to keep the unique sound of podcaster voices. Now, again, OpenAI is not letting just everybody do this, uh, but they're working directly with Spotify on particular uh, podcasts uh, to do this. This this is uh, this is what everybody wanted when when they got tired of of Chat GPTs when you know when they got over the newness of Chat GPT it was like right. why can't I just talk to it well now you can 
Right. And I, I the one thing that stood out to me the most is, is this a precursor to all the phone manufacturers just saying, OK, we're done with our own assistant. Uh, it, it, mm-hmm. This is going to be the next thing for us. Uh, a la my my baby girl Cortana is gone now. So uh, it, it just it just makes sense to me to, to you know, expand this. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think a lot of people were wondering if this would replace Amazon, if it would replace Google Voice, would it replace Siri? Uh, when you think about it, though, Amazon's partnering with Anthropic, right? We heard about that in the quick hits. So uh, Amazon's going to do this, but they're going to do it with a different company. Uh, Google has its own, right? They have Bard and and, and all of their own yeah. la- large language models. So they're also doing it with Google Assistant just on their own. Apple being Apple secretly uh, reportedly has their own large language models being developed. It doesn't sound like they've bought anyone specific, but they, they have bought smaller companies in the past. So they've cobbled something together. Uh, that leaves Microsoft, which is the one using open AI's products. Yep. And it, and it makes me think that the reason you lost Cortana, Chris, is because they knew this was in the pipeline and they're like, well, we don't need to do that anymore. We're going to have this. Right. Which would make perfect sense. Um, if they rename it to Cortana, uh, extra points for you. For oh, yeah. them. Bring her back. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the use cases they presented here also make sense. And I, I think uh, I, I find it be pretty good. Uh, for, you know, for cooks in the kitchen that uh, maybe are feeling uninspired, why not, you know, grab a bunch of stuff and say, what can I make with this? Um, on the flip side, I hope it's, you know, it's an honest thing and say, no, your ingredients are trash. <laughs> There's nothing you can make. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, the, that use case is awesome. I, I've used image search. I've definitely seen something that looked like the most killer wasp on earth. So, you know, I would definitely like, hey, chat GPT, am I in danger with this image? Um, you know, if this thing gets me, am I, <laughs> do I need to rush to the am hospital? I, am I finished? <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. Um, I, I, I was thinking search and, and recognition and stuff like that. And I was glad Joanna Stern brought up these other examples that you mentioned, you know, like, hey, this hose is, is hosed. <laughs> right. How do I fix it? Right. Uh, you know, again, uh, you do want to have a little more confidence in the veracity of the advice that the the large language model is giving you. Uh, but if it can say like, oh, yeah, I know what that here's here's the part you need. And here's a video that will walk you through how to fix it or or I can just walk you through how to fix it. Here are the steps. Yeah, I, I, I think that's great. And it is it is interesting that OpenAI is pitching this as uh, chat GPT can now hear talk and see because it can see the images yeah and i could definitely see uh opportunity uh, even when uh, rod and i are doing some woodworking uh, sometimes you know we fully switched over uh to uh, away from the uh imperial and we went metric because mm. it is that much it is just way simpler and i started too late in life to go figure out what the five sixteenths and all of that foolishness looks like <laughs> um and we were building a table here uh, a workbench and off and we needed specific specifications uh, for it because we were mimicking one that already existed. And we asked a, a Siri and she struggled. Now, to be fair, Bard did find the answer mm-hmm. uh, for the dimensions of the top. But, you know, being able to you know, take something like that and then go a little further and say, OK, now what should my cuts be, you know, yeah. accounting for you know, oh, yeah. thickness and material. These are the things that kind of resonate to me as as far as uh, something like this uh, goes. Well, uh, before before we wrap this up, uh, Joe did record a little bit of what Joanna Stern demonstrated in the Wall Street Journal. So let's let's listen to that because I think it is impressive how natural it sounds. It was. It was about how we can talk to each other now. That's a compelling topic. The evolution of AI and its ability to communicate in more conversational ways has changed how people interact with technology. It's not just about getting information anymore. It's about engagement, conversation, and sometimes even companionship. So that that first voice was Joanna's, in yeah. case you didn't know. Uh, she also sounds very natural because as I've met her. She's a real human. Uh, <laughs> but that, that second voice, that's pretty natural. Yeah, that's that was a, pretty it, good. A little something that that tips me off knowing, but maybe if I didn't know, I wouldn't recognize it. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. Well, NASA's seven-year OSIRIS-REx mission has returned to Earth. It landed Sunday carrying a bunch of rocks and dust from a near-Earth asteroid called Bennu. 
uh, yeah, for the first time, we sent a robot out to an asteroid to scoop up some dirt and bring it back. Capsule touched down in the desert at the Department of Defense's Utah Test and Training Range with around 250 grams of material. NASA says it contains some of the oldest rocks in our solar system, and they're going to use that to help scientists understand just what things look like in the solar system, you know, four and a half billion years ago, whether organic material necessary for life appears elsewhere. Is it common elsewhere in the solar system? And we also may be able to tell if the water on Earth originated on asteroids like Bennu, because that's one theory is that asteroids carrying water crashed into Earth and created the oceans here. And if the ions are the same uh, in any water they find in this dirt on from Bennu, then that would be a pointer towards that being true. Yeah, I just got one question. I need them to figure out all the materials that are on that planet because I want to know what I can craft <laughs> when it comes to, if I land there and, and uh, farm some materials. Can I craft a nice spaceship or something out of it? Now, this is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Where are you getting this idea from, Chris? <laughs> I just I wonder. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and, and all joking aside, uh, the inspiration for the video games is the is the the real idea of right. going to an asteroid and mining it to you know to help either bring materials back to Earth or create things in space so that you don't have to spend the money to launch them into space. Not to mention if they find some type of material that can benefit you know cell phones or something like that, then we don't have to you know, go into some of these crazy areas and, you know, just take up every piece of resources in those areas. I'm, yeah, I'm all for these type of things. Yeah. Yeah. And if they find some unobtainium out there, <laughs> you know, I mean, why not? Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> all right. Let's check out the mailbag on our bonus show for patrons, uh, which in free preview week, you're all getting this week. Uh, last week, uh, we uh, looked at old tech news lineups from 10 years ago. We noticed a reference to text stops in New York, places for people to pull over and safely text. Now, we wondered 10 years later, whether those are still here. And Matt has a confirmation for us. Matt wrote in, while I don't have a picture handy, I can assure you the text stop areas still do exist in New York. It's an inside joke with my wife and I that whoever is driving, the other one will say something like, hon, can you pull over in two miles? I need to text. <laughs> uh, Mike's going to try to grab a picture of it the next time uh, he goes by. You, I don't know if you've ever been driving up in New York and seen these yourself, Chris. I have not driven up since these were created. I've, I've driven to New York many times, but of course. I, yeah, but uh, I haven't seen uh, not not since these type of things have uh, been created. It's been it's been some time since I've been up there. So I, I wonder if it looks like a you know the sit and wait at the airport. <laughs> yeah, I think they were already like they were rest stops and pullouts and and things like that that they just kind of added a sign like here's a place where you can pull out and text. Stop and text. Stop and text. Yeah. Uh, we had a great discussion the other day about subtitles as well in our expanded show on Friday. Uh, and Marianne, uh, Dr. Marianne Gary wrote in and said, I've attached a paper here showing that subtitles help most of us in a wide variety of situations. My own experience is like Tom's. I feel as though subtitles are attention magnets and I miss some of what I would otherwise see or hear, but I'm not sure if the actual data match up with what that with that feeling or if it's just a feeling. Subtitles have a dark side too. My lab just submitted a paper in which we rapidly made people think they had learned some Danish and could apply it to various situations just by showing them subtitles. So, so the paper she did uh, showed people the, the video in Danish with English subtitles and then showed some people the video in Danish without the subtitles uh, and then compared whether people thought they were better at understanding Danish and then tested them on it. Turns out the people who saw the subtitles thought they were better at understanding Danish, but they weren't. Hilarious. That is, that is a great little quick study. Just yeah. to see, see how arrogant people are. I read something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, Chris, my friend, it's great having you along uh, to talk about the stuff to help people understand technology better. Uh, what have you got going on? I know you you made some allusions to cutting boards and meat 
and, and recipes earlier. Tell us about Barbecue and Tech. Yes, Barbecue and Tech Season 5 is still going on real strong. Folks, come check us out if you want to learn how to become a backyard pit master. We kind of walk you through, like, the basics of, of smoking and just out of your backyard. Forget all the technical stuff that you hear, like, on these uh, these big pit masters using. We're just telling you how to do it in your backyard and give your friends something good to eat. Fantastic. It makes me hungry every time I hear an episode and I try never to miss an episode. So you folks should check it as well. BBQandtech.com. As I mentioned a couple of times, it's free preview week. All this week, we're giving everyone access to the Good Day Internet Extended Show. So stick around for GDI. We're going to discuss the Washington Post guide to phone call etiquette. Uh, it's more than just you should text before calling. Voicemails are dead, people. Uh, we're going to talk about that <laughs> and more. Uh, not just for patrons, though, for everyone, whether you're at patreon.com slash DTNS or not. You can also catch the show live Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. Find out more about that at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow with John C. Dvorak as our guest. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>